War is arguably one of the touchiest subjects you can talk about. The effects that wars can have on its people and infrastructure is typically long-lasting and can lead to ramifications that no one has yet predicted. For today's class session, I wanted to look at the ways war as a concept is handled throughout anime, why it's important to see and understand such a horrific thing in media, and highlight some of the brilliant works that have been created throughout the years. I'm Summers with Baku to Basics, and this is War in Anime. Class is officially in session. At the beginning, most anime handled war in a science fiction-based setting. This allowed the outer space aesthetic to take hold of its viewers. Giant warships cascading through the galaxies, pilots flying in giant armored mechs, and wars with alien species have become a common staple. These less realistic means of fighting allow for wonderful stories to take place without having the same weight of a battle simply waging itself on Earth with normal everyday humans. Shows such as Legend of the Galactic Heroes, Neon Genesis Evangelion, and the Gundam franchises lean heavily into these aspects and back them up with strong, well-told stories about the characters being placed in these battles. Galactic Heroes deals with two warring factions thousands of years after Earth has become uninhabitable. Neon Genesis is a stand against the angels as humanity struggles for survival, and Gundam tackles numerous topics, such as orphans being used as war collateral, the underprivileged fighting for the rights to have control, and the faithful trope of war factions jostling for control of the current galaxy's power structure. One show that handles war in a very dark way is 86. Like the previous shows, it deals with a futuristic world, and in this future, the humans are at war with another faction of what seems to be robots. The highest upper class of the humans who run all operations of the war are these people with common characteristics of white hair and blue or lighter eyes, a sign of superiority through genetics. The rest of the public is led to believe that the war being fought is between machines. But in reality, the 86, the lowest of human genetics, are actually piloting the army's machines and being sent out to fight this never-ending war. The not-so-subtle context of a class system, coupled with how every episode the group of 86 we are following slowly are losing members of their squad. Sometimes it's very noticeable. Who has died in combat and other times it's not which just happens to be the effects of war. People die, most times needlessly, and focusing on every single death is just too painful for these people to keep bottled in. Characters are shown periodically forgetting that a comrade has passed away, mentioning someone that has fallen as silence is around the entire room because they are reminded that their friend is no longer with them. The American English term 86 in the food and bar industry is slang to indicate that an item is no longer available. A sobering nod that these people are soon going to no longer be around, as they are seen as simply casualties. Casualties for a war that they themselves don't even know why they are fighting. Another effective use of war is that of the fantasy genre, where shows like Sword Art Online, Attack on Titan, and the final arc of Bleach all of these different or virtual worlds at one or another time had a full-scale war arc. SAO used its underworld demons to fight against the humans, Attack on Titan has the people versus the titans, and subsequently the people of Eldia versus the rest of the world, and Bleach is exploring the invasion of the Quincy's on Soul Society. One rather unique fantasy take on war is that of Saga of Tanya of the Evil. It follows an unnamed atheist Japanese salaryman as he is murdered by a disgruntled subordinate whom he had just fired for being a poor worker. He is then confronted by an entity that declares herself as a god. He renounces this god and simply calls her Being X. Being X then condemns him for not having faith and decides to reincarnate this salaryman into a world where he would face sufficiently difficult circumstances to make him turn to her for help in his moment of need. He gets reincarnated then as Tanya, an orphan girl in an alternate reality's Imperial Germany, simply known as the Empire. In this reality, World War I has been delayed till the 1920s, and oh yeah, magic is now a part of the military. 
According to Being X, Tanya either does not die a natural death or refuses to have faith in it. Her soul will leave the cycle of reincarnation and will be sent to hell for the countless sins that Tanya has committed in her previous life. In search for an escape, Tanya decides to join the Empire's Magic Corps and fight in the war, hoping to reach a high enough ranking as fast as possible to remain far from the battlefield, and in this way avoid the risk of being killed. Tanya soon turns into a ruthless soldier who prioritizes efficiency and her own career over anything else, even the lives of those beneath her, especially those that get on her bad side. It's a different look at war that isn't meant to be as serious as some of the other endeavors, but instead instills fear into the newly reincarnated Tanya, who must work hard to avoid death or give in to a belief system that they refuse to accept. In the past, anime has tackled more realistic styles and stories about the tragedies of war, and no piece of work has told these stories better than Grave of the Fireflies. What's interesting about this film outside the movie itself, though, is some of the things surrounding it. Grave of the Fireflies is the only theatrical Studio Ghibli feature film prior to From Up on Poppy Hill to which Disney never had North American distribution rights. Since it was not produced by Ghibli for its parent company, Tokumo Shoten, but for Sinchosha, the publisher of the original short story, making it one of the last Studio Ghibli films to get an English language premiere. Secondly, Grave of the Fireflies author Akiyuki Nosaka said that many offers have been made to make a live action film adaptation of his short story. Nosaka argued that it was impossible to create the barren, scorched earth that's to be the backdrop of the story. He also argued that the contemporary children would not be able to convincingly play his characters. Nosaka expressed surprise when an animated version was offered. After seeing the storyboards, Nosaka concluded that it was not possible for such a story to have been made in any method other than animation and expressed surprise in how accurately the rice paddies and townscape were depicted. Lastly, some critics in the West have viewed Grave of the Fireflies as an anti-war film due to the graphic and emotional depiction of the pernicious repercussions of war on a society and the individuals therein. The film focuses attention almost entirely on the personal tragedies that war gives rise to rather than seeking to glamorize it as a heroic struggle between competing nations. It emphasizes that war is society's failure to perform its most important duty, to protect its own people. However, director Takahata repeatedly denied that the film was anti-war, in his own words. It is not at all an anti-war anime, and contains absolutely no such message. Instead, Takahata had intended to convey an image of the brother and sister living a failed life due to isolation from society and invoke sympathy, particularly in people in their teens and 20s. Since the film gives little context to the war, Takahata feared a politician could just as easily claim fighting is needed to avoid such tragedies. In general, he was skeptical that depictions of suffering in similar works, such as Barefoot Gin, actually prevent aggression. The director was nevertheless an anti-war advocate, a staunch supporter of Article 9 of the Japanese Constitution, and has openly criticized Japan's penchant for conformity, allowing them to be rallied against other nations. He expressed despair and anxiety whenever the youth are told to fall in line, a reminder that the country at its core has not changed. The film itself deals with these ravages of war and the two young leads seemingly never ending run of struggles and tragedies that just befall them. It is a must watch for everyone because it doesn't shy away from the utter ugliness and sadness war brings to the innocent. War is a harsh reality. It exists in everyday life and the stories anime tells with war as a backdrop only serve to further highlight these things. From great battles for freedom, to stories of just trying to survive in a world seemingly out to get you. The best we can do is learn and simply try and do better ourselves. 
that is the end of today's class session. Thank you all for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, go ahead and give us a like and subscribe to the channel. Comment down below some other topics or shows you'd like us to handle in the future. I've been Summers with Baki to Basics. Stay safe, stay happy, and I'll see you the next time class is in session.